Hi Year 4, so we have a learning challenge for our maths. Can you solve harder correspondence problems such as n objects are connected to m objects? There's at least one, possibly two or three other videos on our YouTube channel playlist that I would recommend you look at before doing this one because they will teach you some strategies and some techniques to have a go at this. I would say this one is a really good video if you like a greater depth challenge. If you like to push yourself and really set to solving a tricky problem, I think you will love these ones. So our first problem, I'll read it through with you. A convenience store in Birmingham sells three types of treats, packets of crisps, chocolate bars and bags of sweets. The ratio of sales is shown on this bar chart. If 48 packets of crisps were sold one Saturday night, how many chocolate bars were sold and how many items were sold altogether? So the bar chart at the bottom, if we have a look at it, it says crisps, sweets and chocolate. And then along that top of the bar are little measurement points, little increments. And they're really useful clues. They're a bit like a scale that you would have in a measuring jug or on a ruler and they're really good clues. Now the fact that we know for sure is 48 packets of crisps were sold on this Saturday night. And if you have a look at the section of the bar that says crisps, we can see it has two of the measurement points above it. Two little spaces between those black lines. And it represents 48. So if two of them represent 48, what must one of them represent? Now, once you've worked that out, and I'm not going to tell you how, I want you to have the glory of doing it yourselves. Once you've worked that out, you can use that understanding to help you solve the whole problem. If you look at the chocolate part of the bar, and count the measurements we've got above it. So we've got one, two, three and a half of those spaces between the black lines. And you should have worked out what one whole space represents. So I think you've got enough information to solve that problem now. Like I say, I'm not going to give you the answer because that will take away the fun. Pause this slide for as long as you want to work that one out. There's lots of methods you could use. You could do trial and error, guessing what number you think each of those little spaces represents. Or you could use your knowledge and your understanding. When you've had a go, we'll move on to the next one together. So pause this until you're ready. Right, the next challenge card. I'll read it through with you. On safari in Africa, Ingrid was lucky enough to see both giraffes and flamingos at a watering hole. If there were 64 legs and 22 heads, how many of each animal were there? So we have to have a bit of science understanding about giraffes and flamingos to solve this. Giraffes are four-legged animals and flamingos are two-legged animals. Don't be confused by the fact that flamingos sometimes stand on one leg. They've got two. The clues we've got are there are 64 legs, some of them from the four-legged and some of them from the two-legged animals, and 22 heads. Now out of those 22, how many were two-legged and how many were four-legged? So a strategy I would suggest you use to solve this is I would write down my two times table first. Two, four, six, eight, ten, etc. As far as you think you need to go. And think of each of those as a flamingo. Two is one flamingo, four is two flamingos, six is three flamingos and so on. And then write down your four times table. Four, eight, twelve, etc. Each one of those represents a giraffe. 
and then you're looking for combinations of numbers from the two times and the four times table that when you add together those products you get 64 so that you've got quantity of legs and then you've got to double check has that given you 22 individual animals 22 heads so that's a strategy I'd suggest you use for this one, but again, I'm not going to tell you the answer. I want you to have the glory of working that out for yourself. Now you might find each of these cards takes you all morning. That's absolutely fine. It's better to take your time and get the answer right than rush through and get some answers wrong. So you might find this is enough for today. You might want to come back to the others tomorrow. Or you might have found that one super fun, super easy and you're ready to look at the next one. Pause this one for as long as you need before we move on. Okay, a similar sort of problem. A farmer in Hamilton placed some chickens and sheep in his yard. When the farmer's youngest daughter knelt down to pick up the hat she had dropped, she noticed there were 42 legs altogether. She also knew that there were the same number of chickens as there were sheep. But how many chickens were there? So again, you've got two-legged and four-legged animals in this problem. We've got the total number of legs, 42. We don't have the total number of heads, but we know there were the same amount of chickens as there were sheep. So see if you can use your strategies from the last one to have a go at this. I'd love you to email me your answers, and then I can celebrate your your success with you, join in your glory. Pause this one for as long as you need. Okay, next one. Harry, a West Australian, was a bit of an entrepreneur and decided to breed emus. Emus are pretty tough birds and hard to control. Therefore, Harry needed lots of dogs to round up the birds. For every 12 emus, he needed one dog. If there were 140 legs charging around the field, how many dogs were there? So could it be that there were 12 emus and one dog? Would that count for all of those legs? Or must it be 24 emus and two dogs? 36 emus and three dogs? How many dogs do we need to get up to? to account for that many legs. Pause and have a go. Next one, or oh, a spider one. On a camping trip. Now I'm not sure how to pronounce this person's name. Tearluck? Tearluck, that's my best guess. Apologies if anyone out there has this name. This person decided to collect as many spiders and flies as he could. When he caught one of the creatures, he put it in a container. At the end of the camping trip, Tearluck counted exactly 100 legs inside the container. Not surprisingly, some of the flies had been eaten. If Tearluck counted twice as many flies as spiders, how many of each creature did he end up with? So now we've got eight legged spiders. And I believe flies have got six legs, but you might want to do some science research to check that. And here the clue is we have got twice as many flies as spiders. So the methods you've been using up to now should help you solve this one. Good luck. Also, if you find out how to pronounce his name properly, please email me. Next one. Anastasia decided to make her bathroom look more creative by tiling it in a certain pattern. She decided to use five red tiles for every four white tiles. Part A of this problem. The sink area needed 45 red tiles. How many white tiles did it need? Did it require? And if Anastasia used 225 tiles, how many tiles of each colour were used? I might do this one in an arty way and 
draw some tiles myself just for a change of tactic to solve this problem. It's up to you how you approach it. Okay, and this is the last challenge card in this video. Hopefully you've really enjoyed them. So one more to test yourself with. In a wildlife sanctuary in Zimbabwe, Guadeloupe visited 19 different enclosures. Each enclosure had only one in animal in it, which Guadeloupe thought was regrettable, for the animals might be lonely. However, she also noticed that there were exactly 50 legs in these 19 enclosures. All of the animals were two or four legged. How many of each kind were there? So we've got two legged and four legged. We know there's a total number of 50 legs. And there's 19 separate enclosures, each with one animal in it. So have fun with this last card. Please send me an email with your answers. Even if you think you've got only one of them right, I would love to see that you have stepped up to this challenge. You might find that drawing the problems has helped you. You might find setting out a table of possible answers. There's all sorts of things you'll have learnt if you've tried your best at these. Well done, Year 4. Bye for now.